The biggest inspiration in my life is my brother Michael. He's the number one reason why I do what I do today. No one has taught me more on how to embrace these common sense success strategies more than he has. In, in my view and everyone else's view that knows him, he is the mark of a true leader. Biggest inspiration of my life. He's 100% disabled as a result of the Vietnam War. He is the only man, as far as they know, in medical history that ever survived that kind of wound. He's in medical journals as someone who beat the odds. 21 feet of his small intestine were either blown out on the battlefield or taken out on the operating table, and parts of his other internal organs were damaged as well. Now, the only reason why I am being graphic here is that I want you to understand what he went through so you could appreciate how he beat this. And I'll never forget the first time that I saw him in St. Albans Naval Hospital in Queens, New York. If it hadn't been for my mom and dad in the room with him, I never would have known it was him. He went from 168 pounds to 93 pounds. And in the room with my mom and dad were his two friends from high school and his Marine Corps buddy whom he was in Vietnam with. And the whole day my brother was going in and out of consciousness. And it was at the end of that day when the doctor walked in and looked at my mom and dad and said, I'm sorry, it doesn't look like he's going to make it. You better start making arrangements. I'll never forget the look on my mom and dad's face. His two friends from high school walked out of the room. His Marine Corps buddy just faced the wall and kept saying why to no one in particular. He just kept saying why. And all these thoughts are going through my head, and I, I remember I was standing right next to my brother as he was lying there, and I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to be, I was only 17 years old at the time, and I'm wondering if this is going to be the last time that I'm going to see him, and something very strange is happening, because he's supposed to be unconscious, and I noticed that he's lifting his arm, and he clenched his fist, and then he raised his middle finger, and, <laughs> and he was waving it back and forth. And right then and there, I knew he wasn't going to give up. Why? Because that was his humor being's response to that doctor's diagnosis, and that was a response he gave them every single time they told him he couldn't and wouldn't be able to do something. First, they said he wouldn't live long. Well, they're wrong because he's alive today. Then they said that he would have to eat certain foods because with one foot of small intestine, they didn't think he would be able to handle any kind of food with substance. You want to know what my brother's attitude was? Don't you ever tell me what I'm going to eat. Typical New York attitude. Don't you ever tell me what I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat a bowl of pasta and a couple of meatballs every day, even if I have to shit on the toilet while I'm eating it. <laughs> and he started, weeks went by, months went by, and they started realizing his small intestines started stretching a bit. And he used the rest of his digestive system for what his small intestine could no longer do. Doctors today, today when he goes back for visits, they say what my brother experienced falls nothing short of miraculous. And I know that word miraculous is a very powerful word to use. But if you think about it, sometimes in life, what is a miracle? Nothing but a shift in perception. It's looking at something where at one point you may be saying, oh man, I'm not going to be able to handle this. This is going to be impossible. But then if you allow yourself a shift in the way that you're thinking, even a slight shift of optimism, that impossibility suddenly becomes very possible. My brother never said, why me? Till this day, I've never heard him complain. I've never heard him say, why me? And isn't that what we have a tendency to do today, personally and professionally, when we're setting out to achieve something, and then all of a sudden life comes in and attacks you? First thing you say is, why me? Why is this happening? Every single time I try to achieve something, I go two steps up and three steps back. Some people call this negative self-talk. I call it self-curse talk. Why? Because you're casting a spell on your life. When you start spewing out words like that and thinking thoughts like that, you are opening the door to the negative zone and you're inviting more toxic thoughts and words to come into play. Creating a totally different reality for yourself. So, and those words and those thoughts will create the beliefs that you have, you see. And those beliefs will lead you to feel emotionally distraught feeling victimized. Those feelings will lead to the actions that you take. The actions that you take 
will lead you to the outcome. Folks, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be a genius to know that that's not going to be a very positive outcome. So my brother never said, why me? He said, this is me. This is what happened to me. What do I have to do to turn this around? Who can I go to that can help me? What needs to be done for me to get from here to there? What strategies, what steps do I need to take to live, to live the life that I desire and I deserve? This is going to be tough, but I'm going to meet this challenge head on, and I know there's something within me that's going to make this work. You see the difference in that mindset? See, those type of words, those type of thoughts solidified a very empowering belief system. Those beliefs caused him to feel victorious, gave him feelings of faith, of hope, determination, optimism. Those beliefs created an unstoppable attitude to succeed regardless of his circumstances. That led eventually to the actions that he took, and that led to an incredible outcome. Another thing my brother did, and if he was here, he would tell you this, he sensed the importance of enjoying himself during the rebuilding process. In other words, he didn't sit there and go, how can I enjoy myself the way I am? Or I'll enjoy myself if and when I get better. He said, no, I'm going to enjoy myself during this process, and it wasn't always easy, but as a result of creating that mindset, it helped him to get better. And you say, how did he do it? How did he enjoy himself in that condition? By focusing on what was working rather than fixating on what isn't working by blessing the things that life has given him rather than cursing what life has taken from him, by being totally grateful for the people that he loved and loved him. We all have the power to do this. He also sensed the importance of finding the laughter in between and even during the tough times. He had an uncanny way of knowing sometimes a couple of seconds is all you need before you decide to give up. Laughter, your humor being, gives you that couple of seconds every single time. So it's like I said when I first came up here, folks, you truly are the creators of your success and happiness. You truly are the only problem that you will ever have. And somewhere within you is a solution waiting to be discovered. And whenever you're confronted with a challenge or a problem, regardless of the severity, it's never a matter of managing the situation. It's a matter of managing your mind. Can you manage your mind and the toxic thoughts and emotions that are trying to keep you from discovering that solution that's waiting to be discovered? My brother was in the hospital for seven months. When he got out, he said he was going to go to college and we didn't think he'd do it. He was 95 pounds because he wasn't Mr. Whiz Kid in high school, first of all. But he did go to college. He graduated with degrees in history, administration, and education. He went back to the same school that he graduated from, and he became a history teacher. Then he became an attendance officer. Then he became an assistant principal. Then he was principal. Then when he wanted to retire, they said, no, we won't let you. And they made him superintendent of the entire school system. Biggest, in thank you. I'll take that applause for him. Biggest inspiration of my life. Now I know you're looking at me right now and you're saying, gee, Steve, that's a great story, but what does that have to do with us? Nothing, I just had some time to kill and I thought maybe, <laughs> I don't even have a brother, but anyway. I was, <laughs> no, the moral of this story, folks, is that it's not, it's not what happens to you that determines how successful and how happy you're going to be. It's what you do about what happens. It's the choices you make. It's the thoughts that you have about the challenge that will formulate the belief and the attitude that you have that makes the difference. It's the thoughts that you have that will create a certain way that you feel that makes the difference. Will you challenge yourself to enjoy yourself during the process of whatever it is you're trying to achieve, and will you dare to find the laughter in between and even during the tough times? Folks, I just gave you just a few of my common sense success strategies. I can only give them to you. It's up to you as to whether you use them or not. I hope I was able to help. You've been an excellent audience. Thank you for your energy and for your attention. Thank you.